Welcome to Season 3, Episode 1 of the podcast. This episode was recorded a few months ago in February. In it, I have a conversation with Captain Ashley Cable as she discusses receiving the news that her father had been diagnosed with cancer. She shares some of the challenges of receiving this unexpected news, but focuses on her father's strong faith in the eternal and living hope that he displayed throughout the entire journey. Her father has, as we say in the Salvation Army, been promoted to glory. We rest assured that he is no longer in pain and has received his eternal reward. For those of us who remain, we strive towards gaining that same reward and know that we don't say goodbye to our loved ones, but rather it's a see you soon. In this episode, we witness the resilience and faith that her father had, even until the end, and how his life continues to leave ripples on earth. This is what makes this episode so important, the understanding that, as believers, we don't have to view death in such a harsh light, but rather as a launching ground to the next chapter of real life, of eternal life. While death is an inescapable part of life, we cling to Jesus' words when he said, Take heart, for I have overcome the world. Now, on to the episode. All right, cool. So we're back for another episode of the podcast, season three. Around the table. Around the table. Who would have thought that we would have a third season? Me. I definitely thought so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have full faith. Thank you. This table's just gotten better and better looking every every season. It, you're right. It really has. Yeah, I think like little by little, we've been able to upgrade different <laughs> things of this uh, of this uh, yeah podcast. At first, it was I think we were just doing audio, and then oh, right, yeah. season two, we we're like, well, we got cameras, so let's try uh, some cameras, some visuals. Yeah. And season three, we said, you know what? Let's throw the whole table out and let's bring in a new table and uh, some cool equipment, lights, lights, plants uh, to make us feel like oxygenated <laughs> right yeah which is so deceptive right because they're like plastic plants and they do You're nothing not for us that, yeah yeah yep they provide us no healthy looking plants <laughs> right we have this uh, beautiful tv that we've borrowed from uh, here from dhq <laughs> so that's great yeah we're just uh scrounging this everything we come can. up yeah it really this is, is. Yeah. It really is yeah i'm just hoping that nobody remembers that the tv's in here and it just stays here forever <laughs> that'd be great yeah as with a lot of Salvation Army uh, equipment and things, right? So true. I feel like sometimes you just randomly come across things and you're like, how did this get here? Yeah. And you just Oh, for sure. For sure. And then there's also the whole, hey, didn't we have like an electric guitar for years and whatever? And no one can figure out where it is. And it's probably at someone's house. Yeah, 100%. Not right. that that's okay. That's not okay. It's not okay. <laughs> We're not justifying that exactly. Uh, it's, all, it's probably at somebody's house collecting dust, which is the worst part. I'm like, just yeah. let it collect dust here. And it's home where it belongs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that seems like the right and fair thing to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, hey, I'm happy that you're um you're back. Another Me too. Yeah. yeah another sorry. feature here on the podcast, which is great. Yes, yeah. and I appreciate the plug, considering right what we're going to talk about today. So yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, we're definitely going to um get into some let's say like some subject matter that potentially could be uncomfortable, but I think our overall focus is to we want to talk about reality, right? What what. You know, life is kind of like the progression of life, I guess you could say, but the reality of the greater reality that there's, um, I mean, we preach so much about, you know, like having a living hope and um, we preach so much about salvation. We preach so much about like, this isn't our, our eternal home. We have an actual celestial eternal home and we always talk about wanting to be with Jesus and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, so, well, yeah, it can be a little uncomfortable. There's also a lot of hope uh, in it. Yeah. And the reality is it's um, something we don't like to talk about. And uh, for me, I don't really want to talk about it until like you're put in the position, right? So, uh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. All right, cool. Before we get into it really quick, um, do you want to share your story? Okay, so you came back recently from the Southwest. Yeah. And um, you came back to a, a pretty cool a surprise, right? Your, your, yeah. um My seven-year-old. I Some of this is just mom guilt because, you know, I was uh, with my dad because my um, my dad has lung cancer. It's like end stage. So I wanted to be there. I kind of thought we were saying goodbye at that point. And then he just kept living and living and living, which was yeah. a, an amazing surprise, but also like, what the heck's happening? Cool. Yeah. Um, but I ended up being there for like two weeks and I just felt horrible because I have my seven year old at home. I have a couple other older kids as well, but you know, 
they're handling it. They're fine. Mm-hmm. Um, and my husband texts me and is like, hey, uh, we went to the SPCA. And I was like, immediately, <laughs> I was like, okay, we're coming home with a cat. Yeah. But he's like, uh, do you think we should should get a kitten? I was like, 100%. I am so letting Gabriel down by being gone for this long. He needs a kitten. Yeah, yeah. So, Sorry, really quick. What are the odds that they already had the kitten? Yeah, that's true. And it was true. they were at home, they and Jay was like, did. "Oh, I should probably like <laughs> yeah. ask if this is okay." <laughs> Although the cat's here. Yeah, you know that's possible. But I just know the minute you went, you like anytime our family steps foot into like a humane society or SPCA, <laughs> we're coming back with an animal. <laughs> it's just I can't control it, um, and I'm just as big a sucker as all of us. So. Uh, they got a kitten and he's like young. He's like nine months, nine months. No, like nine weeks when I met him. So I guess he would have been seven when they got him or something. Mm-hmm. And I come home and <laughs> Gabriel's always wanted like a cat. That's basically a dog. So we tried, we have our first cat river. He tried like putting a leash on him, but he was a full grown adult. And he was yeah. like, um, no, <laughs> he's like, nah, bro, Absolutely not going to happen. Not gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah, he just like, but this one we can train. You can train uh-huh. when there's a young. So. I get to the airport. They come to pick me up, and Gabriel's wearing like a backpack slinged over that's got like one of those little, like a, it looks like an astronaut, like clear glass thing. It's not glass. Like a clear plastic. bubble? Yes, it's, yeah, a, bubble. it's a bubble. Yeah. And the kitten's like putting his head, and, he, and Gabriel's got this yeah. big old smile. He's like, my kitten. And he said, should I take him out? And I was like, I knew there was no other answer than yes. So I was like, yeah, right. go ahead, take him out. So he takes him out. He holds him. And then we get in the car uh, to go home. And he's like, hey, can you sit in the back with me so we can play with the kitten? I was like, yeah, that's so fun. Yeah. And he goes to pull out the kitten again. But this time he grabs him by the throat <laughs> and he lifts him up out of the. And I was like, Gabriel, what are you doing? And he's like so innocent and so pure. He was like, um, you told me that the mommy cats hold them by the neck. I was like, not that side. <laughs> I was like, how is this kitten still alive? And it took some convincing, like, after that, to be like, hey, no, seriously, they don't hold them by, like, the throat. They <laughs> they hold their, like, the skin at the neck. Yeah. So, yeah, best intentions. <laughs> For the sure. kitten is still alive. Praise God. For anyone who wants to know. And he's doing great. Yeah. And weirdly enough, like, he didn't hold it against Gabriel that he held it by the throat. <laughs> I don't know if he was just used to it at that point. Yeah. <laughs> but so I got, I got a couple questions. One is, is that actually possible for you to train a cat on it, like, besides, like, I almost said potty training. You know what I mean? Like they, <laughs> they, they have their themselves. little like, litter boxes or whatever. Yeah. They train themselves. But is it actually possible to train a cat? Because I feel like. If you watch America's <sighs> Got Talent, there's <laughs> there's a couple of these ladies. I think it's mother daughter. And they have like a cat circus thing and they train them. So some cats. So all that to say, I have hope, but I've never trained a cat. Okay. <laughs> so, right. Some cats, like they have a better personality for it, um, but they still can like do things to train them and make them more like comfortable. So like we've been practicing taking the kitten out like on drives Mm -hmm. and stuff like that to see if he can just kind of handle basically being our cat dog at home. Okay. Right on. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah. Apparently he can be held by the throat. So that's (laughs) That's his first trick. For sure. A couple, yeah. couple of like lessons there, right, to learn. One is, like, I think with kids, you have to be so specific. You have to be so specific. Right, because yeah. they'll just, like, literally like, take everything yeah, in a very yeah, little sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm doing the right thing. My mommy told me, and the worst thing, you don't want them to go to school and be like, my yeah. mommy told me I can just grab my cat from the throat <laughs> or whatever. Um, exactly. It's not a good look. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah that, I, okay, that thing about um, training a cat is, is wild, because I just have never seen it. But that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. It makes me a little more open. <laughs> open to cats so maybe cats yeah, yeah 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 for sure i feel like cats have like their own like just their own attitude their own oh, like persona sure. and i feel like they're just you're living in their world they're not living in your world absolutely yeah yeah you mean you basically said it there's no <laughs> there's nothing else to say dogs are like so loyal and cats are like my humans are loyal to me that's expected <laughs> like, yeah yeah that's it is there a reason specifically why you guys like um, go cats. with go with yeah go with cats? Because I know you used to have like a dog, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I love just... dogs. I just this is such a young person thing of me to say, but it's not at all. There's just so much commitment. Like you can't really travel anymore once you have a dog. Mm-hmm. Like, cats can handle a little bit more of the time on their own and stuff. And I I wouldn't mind getting a dog again, but I really want to have a little more flexibility to travel. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, we loved having our dog, but we couldn't go anywhere. We always had to have like a babysitter and that kind of thing. And yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I always have a dog sitter. Yeah. So it's really functional. Yeah. I love dogs too. Yeah. Probably a little bit more. My son likes cats a lot. Cats, yeah. yeah. 
I, I'm personally a dog person as well. Yeah. Um, Adrian's brother was trying to give me a 100% German Shepherd, uh, like full breed uh, German Shepherd. Mm. It's great. I love the idea. So much training. Yeah. Uh, Megan, they're so is, high energy though. Too. They really are. You have yeah. to like take them out all the time, or else yeah. they start losing it. Yeah, yeah. I, f- I had a, a German Shepherd random from the neighborhood. Like, our our fence is kind of high. Me like a six foot fence. Mm-hmm. I don't know how we got in, but I think like it wasn't in, in our backyard. Over. Like roaming. Yes, yeah, so it was like yeah, it was like back there doing something. I don't know. When what there's a will, there's a way. He probably saw like yeah. a squirrel or something, and he was like frog legs. It, and just probably <laughs> just like, yeah, 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 a hundred percent. Yeah, we yeah. when we okay, so when we had our dog first we actually had already had a cat and jay and i like we're dreamers so we thought we could make it work it didn't work the highest i've ever seen my dog jump was chasing the cat yeah. and that's when we realized okay uh-huh. it's time to it's time to rehome our cat because the dog would be too hard to rehome she was pit bull and stuff like that so um thankfully there was a lady at the core who was like i love your cat so she took the cat but yeah that dog i mean he jumped or she jumped uh, to like one of our countertops. Like I've never seen her jump that mm-hmm. high again, but it was just a sheer willpower of I'm going to get this cat. To get this cat. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Crazy. I'm pretty sure she was just going to play with her, but you know, the cat was not reading that vibe. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. the cat was like a little traumatized, oh, a little scared. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Petrified. That was yeah. going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. For sure. Um, yeah. Cool. Okay. So yeah, we're, we're here. Um, yeah. I'm going to talk about uh, just a little bit about, you know, kind of like the current, let's say like season, I would say maybe like of life that you, you know, you guys are kind of like experiencing. Um, also talk about like uh, the podcast that you've created in terms of like being able to uh, uh, talk to your dad, interview your dad and really just kind of like, um, I'd probably say like glean as much wisdom and just insight that you, you can, you know. Um, so like one of the things that really stuck me about uh, the podcast that you, that you did in, the, in these recordings is, um, one of like your taglines is a, uh, you said like life is completely like unexpected, mm, right? Mm-hmm. And that's like obviously something you guys have experienced. Can you like just walk me through a little bit of like how all of this kind of just came to be and how it kind of happened? Yeah. So yeah, in well, at first I have to like add some context because it's almost frustrating context, but it's context. Um, I just finished up a degree program at Fuller Seminary, and. For some reason, uh, the last two classes, I could choose them. Well, I mean, that's not for some reason. That was normal. Like, mm-hmm. the last two classes were like electives. And for some reason, uh, when I was talking with my uh, counselor there, the two that stuck out to me was like uh, global development and poverty and uh, grief, death, and dying. And I don't know why grief, death, and dying was stuck out to me. But I was like, you know what? I was a pastor. I need to be prepared for this. Whatever. So the classes start in August. Maybe they started in July. Who knows? (laughs) But Mm. uh, we come towards the end. And uh, I think it's end of August. Um, My dad's like, hey, don't worry. But they found like a mass in my lung. And I was like, okay. Okay. The Lord's got this. God's Mm -hmm. got this. You know, like he'll, it'll be, it'll be fine. And then, you know, September comes around and he said, okay, yep, it is cancer. It's for sure cancer. And September 6th, then he said, hey, I need to call you uh, about the cancer. They have some more results. And so he calls and he says, hey, I've got good news and bad news. I said, do you want the, or he said, do you want the good news first, the bad news first? And I was like, I mean, I, let's just get the bad news over with, right? Mm-hmm. So then he tells me, he's like, okay, I shouldn't laugh, but I mean, life is life, what it is. Yeah. He was like, um, the cancer is terminal. I have two to four months without treatment. And I was like, Dad, what possible good news is there in this? <laughs> right. And he's like, Ashley, I'm so blessed because my stomach is not affected, like my colon, so I can eat all the food I want until the very end. And I was like, good for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was not good news for me. But now it's something we just kind of joke about. Like, yeah. you got to see the positive and everything, right? Sure, yeah. So anyway, so he told me about all this, and I knew I wanted to – to get there as soon as I could. Initially, when he first got diagnosed, he was still functioning pretty Mm -hmm, well. mm -hmm. He got diagnosed because he was having a problem breathing, but that wasn't, that wasn't new to him. He had asthma. Mm -hmm. He'd been on breathing machines before. Um, So he was still working pretty good. They went on a little vacation actually to some place, Galveston in Texas. So Mm -hmm. near the ocean and that kind of thing with some friends. And then they came back and that's when I went to meet with them. Yeah. And I was like, I just want to, I just really didn't know what to do, but I'd literally just come through this class. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was like, 
I need to figure out what I can do to help. One of the things that the class kind of looked at is, hey, what does it mean to have a quotes good death? Mm. Like there's no such thing in most of our vocabulary. But the reality is if it's something we're all going through, you're going to want to go through it the best possible way. Not yeah. like. It seems like, a, like an oxymoron, right? It is. Things that, that it they shouldn't be. go together. How so let's pretend like it? it doesn't exist. Right. Right. <laughs> right. But um, so I just took some of the things that I had learned um, during the class and I wanted to talk to him about what was important to him. And in many ways, I wanted to do it because I wanted him to have a chance to process. Mm. And for some context, too, and some background on this, like he initially was he was just claiming a healing. Mm -hmm. He was like. Uh, Lord will heal me. Like if anyone is going to be healed by their pure faith alone, it was for sure my dad. Like for me, yeah. that was the, okay, nail in the coffin. Now I understand from completely your healing is not completely dependent on your faith because that man had the faith to heal. Right. Uh, right. He was going pure faith and God just kept saying no, you know, or just, you know, he just, he just said no. I don't know about like not yet or anything. This is mm -hmm. instead the path that God has for him. Mm -hmm. So, um, I wanted to just chat with him and, and talk about his life so that he could feel some sort of one of the things that's needed as someone's grieving, as someone's coming to terms with a terminal diagnosis is, you know, was what was my life worth? What, what did I do? What did I accomplish? And then also, yeah. um, how am I leaving the people behind? Uh, there, there's a, a bunch of like psychological kind of steps that people have to go through to feel like that peace to be able to just to let go. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I wanted to kind of walk him through. And I also thought one of the things he had said to me early on was, well, until I do die, I'm just going to keep preaching the gospel. Yeah. Like I'm just going to keep sharing about Jesus. And I was like, okay, this kind of helps with both of those things. He gets to process his life mm -hmm. and he gets to share Jesus again. Right. So, uh, as you know, grabbed a couple mics mm -hmm. and went there. I didn't even tell him about the idea because I just thought it'd be too hard to convince him. Sure. And um, so really quick, what, did, like, had you ever listened to any podcasts or anything of that sort? Uh, or he's just more? Not like, not like regularly. You okay. know? He's more like sure. someone who'll like watch like interviews on YouTube. So maybe gotcha. like, like he probably has listened to podcasts, but by watching. Like, okay. Gotcha. Right yeah. 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 Um, and I was like, I think it was after a day. I was like, hey, dad, I have this idea. Um, we need to do a podcast. We're going to record your life and what you're going through. And I was like, and I think you have an amazing testimony mm -hmm. because you are still fully clinging to God. He was like, he was claiming a healing, but he was also like, and even if I don't, right, I still believe in God. You right. know, it's, it's, there's no wavering for me on this one. Yes. Right. And so I was like, yeah, I just want to record that. And he's like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So we got the mics and we took them down to the chicken coop. Okay, so really quick, let's talk about that chicken coop really quick. Oh, yeah, you need context. Yeah, yeah that, please huh? tell us, yeah, what that is. Yeah, like podcast chicken coop. What, what was yeah, going on with that? Yeah, it's a podcasting yeah. coop. Yeah. Yeah. No, so hmm, I think it was, it was, a, it must have been early 2023. Um, My mom likes to keep my dad busy. So <laughs> she's like, hey, Raph, I think we, the eggs are just so expensive. And, you know, she's uh wants to be, she's like, I think we should be smart. Like some of these preppers out there, like sure. we should have, we should be prepared if something happens. Yeah. So, um, you're really good at building stuff. Maybe you can build a coop and we'll get some chickens and, you know, we'll be prepared with eggs if something happens. You know, right? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, my dad made it his little project. He got the little chicks and took care of them, uh, in the house first inside, like one of their bathrooms. They just like kind of converted it into a chicken a hatchery? hatchery or something there, like that. Yeah. yeah. Is, that a, is that the right word? A hatchery. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then while they were babies, he was building the coop in the backyard. Yeah. So I come to visit and I was like, this is the weirdest thing. I <laughs> never in my life. I mean, there's two things that shocked me. One that my dad has done. One, uh, he always said, man, I need to get a Harley. When, when you move out the house, we're going to get a Harley again. Yeah. And apparently this all came about because when I was born, they didn't have insurance. And so he had to sell his Harley so they could... Mm. support having mm -hmm. me um reality is my mom probably didn't want him to have a harley when i was a kid anyways but yeah so they sold that and my mom's promise was when the kids move out you can get your harley yeah 
And literally, like the year I moved out of the house, they got a Harley. And I think this weird biker man I had never known. He'd always talked about bikes growing up, but all of a sudden he's like an actual biker and like he looks at more and more and like he's shaving his head and his little goatee's coming in. And I was yeah. like, who are you? <laughs> yeah. So that one threw me for a loop, but and then it also made sense because I was like, well, that's what you said. And then the second one was like showing up home and being like, and now we do chicken farming. Like, <laughs> yeah. <"What?" laughs> right, right. But what's weird, it's not like it's a midlife crisis for him. It uh-huh. was like a, this is who I am. Yeah. And uh, it was unexpected. So I just thought, hey, let's, I want people to kind of get who my dad is a little bit because there's just very like unique, just different, like fun, um, creative and all that stuff. So I wanted to do it by the chickens because it's just unexpected. Yeah. This was everything else. A hundred percent. Yeah. 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 I feel like um, this whole idea, just going back to really quick, the student doomsday prepper thing. Yeah. I'm like, man, this whole, that whole idea actually like doesn't sound as crazy anymore. I feel like it does after anymore, 2020. Right? Yeah. I don't <laughs> well, listen. We, when we were out there fighting, uh, fighting old ladies for, you know, for the last of the, the local oh, for... bread. Yeah. In 2020, the when all the shelves paper, were toilet right? paper. Oh, yes. My gosh. Yeah. Yeah. The idea of doomsday prepping, if you would even call it. I, what it was called. Yeah. yeah. It sounds actually I remember legit. <laughs> during 2020 walking and I was like, why, why is all this toilet paper missing? Mm-hmm. Like, where's it going? Yeah. And I walk past, I'm walking around the neighborhood. I walk past one neighbor's house and their garage is open, literally a wall of toilet paper. And I was like, because of people like you. Because, yeah. <laughs> it's you that I know, like, totally, there's yeah. nothing here. Yeah. And I mean, I'm sure they were just scared themselves, right? Yeah. But all that to say, yeah, I, it's not totally unreasonable. Uh, right. I'm like, out of all things to be afraid of, um, the, yeah, like toilet paper, I I mean. That's not one I that's ever not thought one. in my yeah, life. Yeah, seriously, same here. Yeah. Strange times. Strange, strange times. world, yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's important to always keep talking about it just so it gives us a little bit of like, it's it just becomes a little bit sobering. You know, of how crazy, like, things can get, how quickly they can get, and then also how... Um... Well, talk, yeah, talk about unexpected, but, like, COVID, yeah. I had so much more faith in our healthcare system, totally. which is um, not to say anything against any of the amazing people who work in it. It's mm-hmm. not. It's to say in the structure. I thought for sure, oh, yeah, we're going to get, like, a vaccine for this. No problem. <laughs> it's, like, two years later, and I'm like, all right, everyone, kids, mask up. We're allowed to go outside. Like, let's do this. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um yeah, so it's just it, life can be so unexpected. As yeah. much as we try to think that we have enough technology to control absolutely everything, mm-hmm. we are still very human. And if anything, I think it just reminds us that I think specifically in the West, we've taught ourselves to believe or what we would call maybe uh, developed countries. But we would, we've taught ourselves to believe that we don't need God. Mm-hmm. God is for people who are weak. And I think it's just because we hide our weakness from ourselves. And that's part of what I think is important about this conversation that I end up having with my dad is uh, death is a regular part of life. Totally. We try to pretend like it's not, but it it really is. It's and it's okay. Like you don't it's not necessarily something you have to be afraid of, especially if you believe in an afterlife that is actually just full of love and like the the writing of all wrongs in the world and just this beautiful peace. Basically, the world as it should be, Um, then it really doesn't have to be scary. Um. But I think the problem is we we like to, especially, again, in the West, where we're supposedly so uh, developed, Mm -hmm. we like to pretend like it doesn't exist. You know, like when people get older, they go into rest homes. Um, When people get sick, they go into hospitals. Like we just try to fix, fix, fix. But the reality is every single person who's living right now at some point will face death. Yeah. I I think that's interesting because like listening to the podcast and even even before that, um, I've always thought like, I think I, I feel like it's an kind of like a normal thing in a sense where um, we do have like an aversion to like talking about it. Like nobody wants to talk about it. Even yesterday, me and you were talking about like how we're always trying to like beat the clock in the sense of like we're buying all of the the creams, oh, yeah, you know, the yeah. wrinkle creams, yeah, to stay, absolutely, to stay um, to stay young. Um, and I'm not knocking it because I. Oh no, I have my I vitamin per- C cream on this morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> same, same here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I use Kiehl's. And I want to believe that it works, you know what I mean? Because it's oh, so it expensive. Oh, sure works. Because yeah. it's expensive, you I'm great. like, you look yeah, like it works. I, 20 years younger. Thank you so much. <laughs> that makes me 10. Yeah, it does. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but we have like an aversion, right? And it's 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 true. It's not something necessarily that's like super comfortable for people like to talk about, right? Um, and what I think what's interesting, I think it's part of like modern life as well. Um in the sense that like, so for example, like I, I read this like statistic or something and the numbers might be a little fuzzy, but so like in the 1800s, the the 
lifespan, like the average lifespan of people was like 44 years. Yeah, I was getting ready to hear that. Yeah. Like, like basically like I'm on my final legs already. <laughs> yeah, I know. Same here. Yeah, I'm like knocking at the door. Uh, yeah, like 40 something years, right? Yeah. So then like with modern like modern medicine, technology, whatever, like it's expanded to like, you know, 70, you know, 80 years. And then sometimes you see people that like, you know, hit to, to you know, to be 100 or whatever. Yeah. Um, so like it's a it's the constant pursuit of right of like being able to expand life and you know and do all that all that type of stuff, um, but yeah. But it seems like we're always trying to run away from it, which is like there's a natural in, yeah like yeah, naturally like nobody wants I mean, to. It's to do healthy that. Yeah. to not want to die. Not, exactly right? <laughs> right. Yeah. If somebody wanted to, then like that's where you know typically like, you need to you, get you like need some help. help. You need some, yeah. some help, right? Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it almost sometimes seems like, um, it's the thing that we put furthest away from our mind. Yeah. Um, because maybe it's something that we don't want to necessarily like, you know, confront or think about, um, you know, so like we were talking to earlier, like I was saying like, that's something that I kind of think about a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> not like in a very, like, not in a morbid not way, in a morbid <laughs> way yeah, per se. Right. Yeah. Um, but in the sense of like. It's just making me more cautious about things, hmm. specifically even now, like after having a, you know, having a son, a child, yes. I'm like, oh, I have to be like way more aware of my surroundings because I have a responsibility. My responsibility is to my, you know, to my family, to my, to my son, you know, to, to be there, to support him. And I can only do that if I'm cautious, I'm aware of what's going on. And of course there are a million factors, you know, outside of yeah that could affect that, but it's like a responsibility that I have to, you know. Take care of myself so I can take care of like my family. Yeah. Um, but I agree. I think there's just like a really strange kind of like, let's just not talk about this. Let's just, it's weird. We only talk about it, which is, I think it's a good thing. Like in the church, when we think about like talk about heaven and we talk about some things of the yeah. sort. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's good as far as like the church, um, you know, for us to be, you know, to be discussing because it really is like an actual like living hope that we have. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that is, I mean, I guess that's, life-changing I think when I look back I feel like growing up in whatever era I grew up in 80s 90s um that was a huge focus on the church was like become saved so you don't go to hell like that's what it's all about yeah and I think we've had this kind of development in the church um in the last however many years or maybe it's just been within me I don't know but I hear more and more now people talking about like life now like you're you're eternal life starting now life with jesus is being better than life without jesus and i think we've done really good on on focusing on that talking about what it is to have justice in the world now i mean because mm-hmm. jesus didn't come so that we could just like continuously just separate our souls from our bodies and now you don't have to worry about um where your soul's going like he came to change the world mm-hmm. and uh he took away the sting of death but that still happens right, right. so i think uh, we've almost kind of gone the other pendulum where the other pendulum swing where we almost just don't talk about it even in the church as much. You're sure. not really hearing that uh, conversation and because it's a hard conversation. Um, but I think it's helpful for us to keep both in mind, both our present reality mm-hmm. and our future reality. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, maybe just to kind of go go a little bit into this and we'll come back to to the main point of this. But like, I think it's also part of like maybe in terms of church, like, Maybe being like the seeker friendly church, right? Because yeah. I don't, I don't know I don't how scare like people away. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. scary. Yeah, I don't know how many people you're gonna like essentially like grow your congregation if that's yeah. your, your sole focus. Right? Well, I know they had like a Jonathan Edwards is like this famous preacher, and they had a huge like revival around him. And because and his sermon was called "Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God," like that would not sell. Yeah, for sure. Right, right. But I think at the time, like you know. Uh, Christian religion was kind of more like mainstream. Mm -hmm. And so people already had this sense of like belief in a God. It was just like, do I get myself right? Whereas now we're actually talking to people who were like, hey, sin is kind of, what is it? Mm -hmm. What is evil? What is bad? And so we almost have to reframe what that is for people so they can understand, hey, the brokenness you see in the world, that's that's not just brokenness, that's sin. That's Mm -hmm. that's separation from God. For people to be able to see like like the cancer that's growing, like, Mm -hmm. right? That's that's the result of sin. Not necessarily my dad's sin, right? But mm-hmm. the fact that we live in a broken world. Right. That's what's just kind of, it's it's this evil stuff. And that's the power of who God is, is like he can destroy those things. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it just gets even more 
complex as you think about it, right? Because then you go like, well, God, why don't you destroy those things now? Like, why couldn't you heal my dad of cancer? I mean, I remember yeah. talking to God and I was like, seriously, you put me in a grief, death and dying class? Like, <laughs> yeah. where's the health and healing and right, like the yeah, power for miracles class? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah miracles, and <laughs> I was like, that's messed up, man. Like, uh -huh. if, you, if you knew, but uh, I think it was meant to be because I think... Uh, and my dad brings this up when we were talking one of the times. He said, hey, you know, where are all the people Jesus healed? And I was like, well, they're dead now. I was like, mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It was never about making it so people could live eternal right then. It was about saving souls. It was right. about changing people's lives. Right. And so they have right. an eternity uh, with Christ. And eventually, you know, all things will be made right mm -hmm. um, when Jesus comes back and restores the world. Or finally removes all the sin um, that I think he's just patient enough not to just destroy right now because mm -hmm. the reality is we're all sinners. We would all be in the in the flow of destruction, you know, so. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm taking a really quick break from this episode just to remind you that if you're enjoying this conversation or any of the other conversations that we've had on this podcast, to go ahead and give us a share, like the podcast, subscribe to the podcast, and pass it along to other people you know will be able to benefit and will enjoy this. Also, I want to remind you that you can follow us across all social platforms at SoCal Division. That's at SoCal Division. There you'll be able to find a lot of really good content. So be sure to give us a follow. All right, back to the episode. Yeah, um, you know, one thing, like listening to the, the podcast, um, that's like incredibly like encouraging um specifically like just hearing your dad talk well one he's a really good storyteller yeah true. um yeah and then i just got into episode number three where he talks about his conversion story we don't oh, have to go into that i think yeah. if you're listening you got to listen to it. it's pretty it's pretty cool it's really wild um but the part that trips me out so much um which is a encouraging uh, encouraging thing is um the amount like to me it just it's like a uh, an example of the amount of love a person can have like for the lord and for jesus the amount of mm -hmm. gratitude a person can have mm -hmm. you know kind of um yeah towards that and it just kind of reminds me a little bit of like the story of like job right like in the middle of like yeah. all of the craziness of things kind of like getting messed up all around like he wouldn't curse god you know if anything was still like dude like it doesn't matter like I came in with nothing into this world. I'm going to leave with nothing, you know, um, yeah. out of this world, you know, like blessed be, like blessed be the Lord. And I feel like yeah. that's kind of like a little bit of, of listening to his story of like the perspective that he has yeah. um, and just the amount of gratitude. And it's like, it really is like encouraging to um, see people with such zeal, such love uh, for God, such gratitude. Um, it's something that I think like we need to be like, hearing a lot more of um i think yeah. that's that's one of the effects i think that this that this episode is podcasting recorded like his words are gonna ha have on people yeah is that i think you definitely walk away with that and it kind of like it, it causes you to like check your own heart like man you know yeah. am i really like that one on fire for jesus um am i really that grateful despite whatever my circumstance you know is or whatever it looks like um whatever happened whatever didn't happen am i still grateful Am I walking in a, in a spirit of gratitude yeah. for all the things that have happened? You know, the gift of salvation, you know, the gift of, you know, being free from, you know, my past, yes, you yeah. know, and being able to walk into like a, a, a better future. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because um, a lot of it just comes down to your perspective, right? Because as of this recording... My dad is still around. Yeah. And it's, it's actually a struggle for him. So when we did that recording, um, it was like uh, late September, early October. And then I went through and I just kind of edited it mostly for clarity, for long pauses and for the fact that I start so many sentences and then change my mind halfway through them. So then I had to <laughs> fix that up a little. Um, and so then I went and played it for them in January. Um, and it's fantastic on the timing. It was a God thing because he couldn't have a whole conversation now like he could then mm -hmm. um but even just his gratefulness uh with listening to it thanking god again his he he has a hard time breathing right now he's on oxygen mm -hmm. i mean it's 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 messy it's mm -hmm. it's not pretty it's not nice but he's just so grateful every day uh, a few points he's been like okay god like i'm past due it's time to take me mm -hmm. but he's still the perspective is still if i'm here it's for a reason, for a reason. yeah and so he's just always trying to find ways to and make the best of his day 
he's stuck at home. He's, you know, not able to move around that much, but he's trying to make the best of his day. And for me, like, that's so such a reminder to me, like, hey, I have the ability to do so much right now. Why can't I just be grateful and just make the best of the day? Not in the sense of like, hey, I need to get ahead, but in the sense of, hey, I need to just be grateful to God for everything that I have, including the breath of my lungs. Absolutely. That comes so easily for me. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like what's really cool too with like um, this idea that you had of like just being able to record a story is that like, you're right. I think like everybody, when it comes to like the topic of like, you know, passing away or whatnot, like we all want to leave a legacy. Yeah. Right. You want to leave a legacy. Like you want to be able to, um, like you said, part of the grief um, in the book, like you want to process and you want to feel like what I did in this world mattered. Yeah. It affected people positively for something good. And like this type of medium, using this type of like media and these type of like resources, like, um, everybody's doing it right now. Everybody, everybody's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, everybody's doing it, but it's yeah. like, it's, it's so powerful. Even like, I've seen like you posting, you know, about the, about the podcast, like on your own social media account and then seeing the comments, like I'm like, mm. which is hey, Facebook, Facebook is public. So I'm allowed <laughs> to read the comments, but I've been reading some of the comments and, um, yeah, just seeing how, how it's like help people and how it's blessed people yeah. just to hear the conversation. And I feel like that's part of like the ripple effect of his life, you know, uh, still having an effect, which is, um, just great. Yeah, it's so good. It's so it makes me feel so good because like like I was saying, uh, it's been a rough mm -hmm. few uh, weeks, um, really rough. Like uh, it, it is stuff like you you talk about Job. It's funny because he's been reading a lot of Job mm. and just reminding himself about Job and reminding himself, hey, if we're gonna accept the good things from the Lord's hand, we're gonna accept the bad things too. Mm -hmm. So uh, without like you know cursing his name, without ever losing faith in him, right. he he's gotten frustrated with himself he's like come on body you're you're done like, let's just go let's, but yeah. <laughs> but I, it's amazing the body's resilience it's like no i'm gonna fight till the end you know right but um just that i get to read those comments to him because he's not really on social media at all mm -hmm. usually i'm not either but i was like okay i got a platform your podcast dad so <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm gonna need to be on social media more yeah so um, reading those to him, like just the encouragement he gets, like, hey, your life is still making an impact. You're still making a difference, even though you can't really move around right now. Look at what this person is saying. And then some people have come out and said like the kindest things that, you know, years ago you made this impact on my life. Right. And he's like, whoa, I had no idea. Or dang, I was really bad at that time. So thank God, you know? Yeah. Right? So, yeah. Yeah. That's it's really been good. So that's... people's, I, I guess I, all that to say, people's yeah. kindness and response has been so so good. And maybe that's maybe a part of something to kind of focus on, you know, maybe part of the problem when we don't focus, that's not that we need to focus on death. When we don't acknowledge death is we don't get to actually say those kind things to people that, you know, we could miss out. We could miss out on saying, mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, is there anything else you want to say about the book that you kind of I brought up? Did, yeah, because I should yeah. bring this book in. Yeah. Wanted, and like also because now I know that we're getting recorded. So yeah, there we hey, go. You see the book there? Is, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> this and is, now a word from our sponsor. Now we're for, yeah. <laughs> grief counseling grief and grief counseling. therapy. <laughs> so this is, uh, was the book that we had to take in our class and it took us through kind of the stages of grief, the stages of grief that people who, that people, the survivor goes through, the person, you know, who's, who's not um, passing away or hasn't passed away or whatever it is. And, and the ways that we process through that. And it talks also about how, like, in our society, we don't like to talk about it. And that's sometimes what makes it hard mm -hmm. uh, is you try to grieve, but people don't know what to say, you know, so they right. don't say anything. Um, so you can end up not only are you grieving, but you're also feeling completely alone. Mm -hmm. um, and that's actually, you know, not how humans were designed. We were designed to be in community. So right. being able to share that. And then it actually talks a lot about how other cultures are actually better at grieving, you mm -hmm. know, where you you might have certain cultures where they'll actually have the the Okay, this is really left, not left. This is really just left field for me, mm -hmm. but whatever. Like the, they're with the deceased mm -hmm. days after they've mm -hmm. passed and still mourning and grieving and like everything stops so they can grieve. And in, in some ways that's actually more healthy for the psychology, like for, for, for your mind to heal, to accept what has happened and to find beauty in it even mm -hmm. and the beauty of the person's life and mm -hmm. just how loved they were and everything. So um, that was where a lot of where I... Um, talked about came from and then quite a few of the quotes i did were uh, by melissa kelly which she has this book called i think it's called contemporary grief and it's written for pastors it's so helpful in looking at some of these hard things through the light and lens of who jesus is mm -hmm. not just in the future but also even in our present mm -hmm. and all the hope that we have right now in our present 
But I have to like, you know, give credit where credit's due. So that's where a lot of my thinking on all this came together. Yeah. A lot of the questions I had for my dad came from some of the reading that I'd literally just done. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, and I think you kind of like mentioned a little bit of it, like the process of everything. Um, and this is maybe more of a question for you specifically, like um, where have you seen like God in the middle of of this, like mm. of this whole season? And the reason why I'm asking is because I think um, whenever, like, yeah, I guess whenever people face difficulty, like it, it can be, it can be very easy for us to just get tunnel vision yeah, or, you know, or fall into like, like can you, and it's a, I think it's a, it's a natural reaction, but to be like, God, like, dude, what's what going on? Happening? What's yeah. going on? Like, why is this happening? We question God, we ask. And, and beauty, I think is that one, like to say, like, I think there's grace for that. I don't think Absolutely. like God holds any of that against yeah. any one of us. Um, like I always go back to like the Psalms, you know, I think David mm -hmm. talked about, he's like, um, Basic guy, like, you know me, you know that I'm like dust kind of saying mm -hmm. like, dude, you know, I'm like just a person. I'm, I'm like kind of nothing, yeah. you know, and there's like definitely a lot of grace for that. Um, and so I'm asking you that just like for people that are listening, you know, um, that maybe are going through a difficulty. Maybe it's not this specifically, but it could be something else yeah. where they're like, yo, God, like, where are you in the midst and of yeah, this? You can like, grieve for things other than death, right? Like right. you can grieve a lost relationship. You totally. can grieve lost dream or, you know, possible lost dream. Um, so much of it is just bringing it to Jesus and trusting that Jesus has got it. I think one of the best articles that I got to read on grieving, and really this one was in light of, um, of dying, is that Jesus actually even provided a model in his death for us. And he talks about he actually hit some of the main uh, processes you have to hit to really have a what's quote, you know, good death. Like when Jesus gets taken away, he he actually was very specific in everything he did. First, he had his final meal with his friends. Right. He was doing his goodbyes. Yeah. He got that chance. Uh, then we see when he's on the cross, he says, you know, woman, here is your son. And he gives his mother, Mary, to. Uh, I think it's the disciple John, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, you take care of him. So he was he was actually doing all of these things that were necessary, even when uh, they tried giving him uh, whatever the vinegar mix, whatever it was that they were giving him, or he said, like, I'm thirsty. Um, he, he ended up rejecting that because he didn't want anything to, well, we don't really know why, but he rejected it, but he wanted the water. He just wanted the water. So he took care of all these key needs the physical health, mm -hmm. um, his family, saying goodbyes, getting the last words in. And then he says, it is finished. And it's like this acceptance of, now I'm out of control um, of what's happening next, you know? Mm -hmm. And we can kind of look to that as a model. First of all, you're never alone in your grief. You're never alone in what you suffered because he has done this already and in ways that we can even comprehend, you know? And to be able to trust that this God who loves us loves us enough to walk with us through these things rather than to save us from them. Um, I think that that's been uh, an encouraging thing for me. The fact that I got to do this class was really helpful because it helped me already to process through a lot of that stuff. That was stuff I was thinking about before this all happened. Um, and then the other thing that's actually been really amazing about it is if I didn't have this kind of timeline on my dad, right? Uh, I don't think I would have had these conversations and I could have missed out on these conversations. Um, that, that's been really invaluable, um, especially because the reality is like I get along great with my dad now, but as a teenager – it's like oil and water. Like yeah. <laughs> it's just, there it was, it was just opposites. And so it was uh, really difficult. So it kind of came, there was a chance to really fully understand him. I think, you know, we've already, as an adult, it's different. You look at your parents differently, you know, and I'm like, man, he just, he was doing the absolute best he could. And I was, you know, doing the absolute teenagerist I could. So, uh, but I've been able to have these conversations and understand who he is and and why 
I don't know why he was the way he was as when I was a kid. It just kind of all kind of clicks together and it gives me a lot of peace too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you said a lot of cool things, uh, important things. Um, I don't know if you can bring up this like Matthew scripture verse. Um, we see it here. Um, it says, um, and I just kind of want to see what your, your take is and maybe like just to provide me potentially some perspective um, on it. You know, <laughs> the Beatitudes, like the beautiful sayings, mm. like some of these are like, some of these are cool, like in the sense of like, yeah, they feel good. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they kind of make sense. And then some you're like, I don't understand that one. Like, doesn't make sense. And like even reading the word uh, uh, blessed, like when you read some of the definitions of, of that specifically, it means like to be envied, um, like, which is a really, oh, which is a, yeah. which, is, <laughs> which doesn't really feel always like comfortable. It's like in contradiction, right? Like yeah. this, and which makes a lot of sense in terms of the kingdom of heaven, how it's, you know, opposite of like the wisdom of the, of this world. But mm -hmm. so one of these is like, you know, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. That one's like a, a very strange one, right? So like if we switch it up to like, if we don't say bless, we say to be envied are those who mourn mm. for they shall be comforted. Mm. Like, yo, that does not kind of feel yeah, good. It doesn't up, sit well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That doesn't feel very, yeah. very great. <clears throat> so I love to see like, maybe you have some perspective on this. Um, I can, I'll give you mine if that's kind of yeah, cool, really quick. It off. Um, so I'm not going to, this isn't about my story, but um, so my my family, we went through a uh, tragedy as well mm. um, with uh, the loss of my brother um, years back. But the way that this one, this specific verse um, came alive to me is, is what's something you had referenced before too, in terms of the way people like mourn, mm -hmm. um, is that the beauty that I was able to find in that morning mm. is in the beauty of community, mm. like the people that came around, wow. came around us to support us. And yeah. like in the Hispanic culture, Mexican culture, like one thing that, um, whenever you're grieving or whenever you're going through a tragedy, people say is estamos, estamos contigo or like we're with you. Mm -hmm. And that's like, they don't like, at least in my family, my community, the people that are around me, they didn't say much. They didn't have words, yeah. very many words to be just like, presence, just, really. yeah, to yeah. say something. They would just say, we're with you. Yeah. And they were like there and they felt it. And then the beauty of all that was like the amount of hospitality, mm -hmm. the amount of people coming, yeah, just around you to support you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always heard somebody say like, you know, whenever you go through like difficulty, sometimes you don't you don't hear what people say. People like try to comfort you with their words. That's true, yeah. Right? They're trying to tell you something like hate and like and sometimes you're like, oh, what can I tell this person like that will help them and be encouraging? <laughs> yeah. And um like you don't necessarily remember those things, but what you remember is the people. Yeah. Like yeah, the fact around that you, you. Even tried in many cases. Yeah, they tried. Yeah. yeah. You remember those type of things. You yeah. remember them. You remember those that were grieving and mourning with you. And like that's why personally like i found like the beauty and where like this kind of makes has made sense you know for they shall be comforted not just by god but by people people mm. that kind of come around you and you see your you see your community and they yeah they uphold you you know really when you when you feel like i just ain't got it you know i yeah. don't got it today yeah that's really cool yeah i love um the beatitudes this one you said beautiful sayings is that like I think that's I think that's what like it kind of like translates to I think. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I was told as a somebody kid, can fact check me. No. <laughs> I, yeah. I was told as a kid, which you know what you're saying makes more sense, uh, that it was like these are the attitudes you must be, and 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 as I got older and I was actually making sense of it, I was like these are not even attitudes. <laughs> these are like bad situations. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah. It's interesting because in the Beatitudes, Jesus just flips the world upside down. And he says, everything you thought is wrong. Because you would think it is, blessed are the strong in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Right. Blessed are those who don't mourn, because you're lucky. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Blessed are the super arrogant and have great self-esteem, because they definitely are the bosses of the earth. Totally. Right? Mm -hmm. So like, and that's what our world tells us. And then he says, actually, the truth is... And flips it all upside down, Unreal. and all the people who were now were on the bottom are now on the top. And not only is that true of all those who are on the bottom, it also then challenges us. Like, hey, look at yourself. Are you on the bottom? Or are you on the top? Because if you're on the top, actually, get nervous. 
Right. Because that's not how the way the world is going to work anymore. When all that is wrong, all that is sin, all that is pain and hurt comes untrue, what will be true is, are these things. Mm -hmm. The poor in spirit will have the kingdom of heaven. And, mm -hmm. and then always, verse 11 always like scares me, but it's all right. Blessed are, are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely right. on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward in heaven is great. And that kind of, that kind of though ties it all together. Not only is Jesus making everything different than it was before, mm -hmm. bringing the low up and, 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 you know, lowering those who are up high, but he does expect us to be a part of his kingdom. Mm -hmm. It's not like, hey, uh, my kingdom is here and good for everyone who was a loser before. <laughs> mm -hmm, <laughs> right. right. Myself included, right? Yeah. But instead it's like, hey, good for everyone who was on the low before, but also join me. Uh, I'm not going to force my kingdom on you. Join me, but understand the world is not going to understand you because right. this is opposite of what the world teaches. Totally. So, yeah, I find it so... I, yeah, I really like the Beatitudes as well. And I, and again, exactly what you're saying with even in terms of the things that are difficult in this life to focus on these, to focus on these sayings of Jesus, the beautiful sayings are so good. Um, mm -hmm. That is more true than what we're kind of taught is true by what we see. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, to me, like this is, you know, kind of came to mind, listen to, the, to your podcast. I'm like, this is like, that is the kingdom of God, I feel like. This there's such a crazy hope and this like looking forward to what's, you know, coming. Like yeah. finding the beauty in um in the pain, finding the beauty like in the in the difficulty. Um, that literally is like, you know, yeah, the kingdom kinda like personified in a, yeah. in a way. Yeah. Um and something that I definitely see. Exactly. Yeah. And you see that all the theme all throughout uh, in the New Testament specifically, but you see it in the old testament as well. Like God comes to the lowest. God is, you know, we see Jesus born in a manger, right? And we see shepherds coming to visit him and, and people who are uh, wise men was what we like to call them. But I mean, like they were just people from a different country that like red stars. So like not necessarily something that would have been esteemed in Jewish times, right? Or yeah. well, Jewish times in that, in that era. Um, Jesus just continually changes the narrative away from what we think is a win. You know, uh, yeah, which does push against and um, some of the, you know, it's kind of like real trendy to have like all these positive like sayings and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And, and they're really good in that you really do have to like anchor yourself in truth, but it can get almost toxic when we're so busy denying the bad that is actually true that we don't have a need for a savior anymore, right? right? It's like, I am enough. I am enough. We, I mean, yes, but also, yes, you are enough. God made you. And not only did God made you, like Jesus died for you. So mm -hmm. you are enough, but not because of who you are, but because of who God is. Right. Um. So I think, yeah, again, it's just, it changes the way everyone thinks. And if you really allow it to infiltrate your mind it should change the way you see the world and including in then these kind of like tragic situations where you can still see hope because jesus has already announced like hey the kingdom's totally different than what you guys thought right yeah 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 when, when you embrace it mm -hmm. you it opens up your eyes when you embrace it, it yeah. you kind of you're open to like a new reality exactly different reality. and it doesn't make it like not hard it's still hard Correct. jesus is saying Correct. it's going to be hard but he's like Correct. but this is what's going to happen and this is this is basically who who you are in these situations. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Cool. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, uh, maybe just to kind of start rounding this off a little bit. Um, uh, you listen to your, to your dad, um, you know, in the episodes as he, as he's talking, um, what's one of your takeaways? I'm curious, like what's something that maybe you just walked away. So like, uh, you also kind of use like in your tagline, it says, um, you went to try to understand death. Um, but you actually, you actually walked away with a better understanding of life and what that kind of like means now. So yeah. maybe can you like kind of unpack a little bit of that? Yeah. I mean, that's basically what I was going to say. That's what my walk away or my, yeah, my takeaway was just, you know, you just got to live your life and you got to enjoy it because it's a beautiful thing. Um, one time, I don't remember if it was a DYR or young adult retreat or whatever, but Caroline Rowe, she mm -hmm. was preaching and she said something that I've just like pondered since and, she said it way nicer than I'm about to say it, but essentially she <laughs> was saying 
she had thought about it and realized, though, in heaven, right, everyone will just worship God because, I mean, we'll see God's glory. Like, it's like we won't have an option. And it, it'll be beautiful. Like, it, we'll want to. Yeah. Like, it will be compelled to just because it's so darn beautiful because we can see it. But earth is the only time we have a choice to worship God, not necessarily yeah. knowing if we can always see his goodness. Not wow. necessarily, yeah. you know, it. it's purely our choice. Wow. And so there's a beauty in the being able to worship now in this life. And I thought about that a lot, especially with my dad and like, hey, he's going to be so happy when he sees his best friend, Jesus. Like, mm -hmm. it's going to be such a reunion, like kind of bummed I won't get to see right. that part. Yeah. I was like, God, if you want to show me stuff, that's fine. <laughs> you know, I'm not I'm not complaining. Just a little window. Yeah, just a little just window. See, see also, you know, help me with yeah, any yeah. of my doubts. So. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> right? For sure. Yeah. Um, But just just that thought like, hey, for every minute that dad is still here, he gets to praise God in this way. And especially in the storm, right? Especially in this difficult time. And he still is a witness to me. Like my faith has strengthened because of what I've seen with him and how he's he's dealt with um, some of that pain. So again, yeah, the, the big takeaway is how we can live our life now, just being full of faith and just being full of uh, that hope. Yeah, cool. Um, I think might be the, this might be the last question I got for you. Um, uh, I want people to walk away um, being able to um, maybe with some practical ways of like, how do we, how do we come alongside people? You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. in, in, in moments of, you know, challenges and difficulties, like what are, what are some, maybe some ways you can kind of think of like, whether it's like, you know, some things that you read through the book or some things that like you've experienced, you know, at the moment um, to be able to come alongside support, be able to, yeah. to just like, yeah, be there for individuals or something. Are there some things that you can kind of think of? Yeah, well, I think a big thing, uh, and you would know this from your experience too, right? Everybody's so different. Mm -hmm. um, I had some people like who would text and that was like super sweet and super nice. And sometimes when I was there with my dad, I just wouldn't respond to anyone. Like, it's just how I was processing. I was like, I'm just, I'm emotionally just drained. I can't, but I know some people like they need that. So it, again, it's just case by case, person by person. I remember one of the more confusing things I read in, in one of the books, the head of us, uh, we read A Grief Observed by C.S. Lewis. And it was actually, it was like his journal whilst his wife was dying of cancer. And the man is so stinking brilliant. Even in his journal, he says some of the most profound things. But one of, and he ended up publishing it like years later because people were encouraging him because there was some good stuff in there. And one of the things he talked about, one of the stories, someone was trying to say something comforting about him being, uh, her being in the arms of Jesus and whatever. And he was just infuriated because like, mm -hmm. I needed her to be here. Yeah. And I thought, and then later on when he kind of wraps it up and he, he basically comes to the same conclusion, but it was on his own terms. Right. And so I think yeah. the thing to know is like, hey, you're not necessarily going to say the right things. You might, you might mess it up. I love that saying like, we're with you, you know, mm -hmm. that's a beautiful saying. But it's okay as long as people are are reaching out and like showing just love. I think that's really what people are wanting and needing. And yeah, you might make a grieving person angry because mm -hmm. they're already angry. Mm -hmm. But uh, you just do the absolute best that you can because you're connecting with a person. It's just a person. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I again, I, by no means am I an expert on it because I'm just talking about my own experience. Sure. I know that I'm awkward around death. Yeah. I'm awkward when other people lose someone because I it's it's so hard to know what to say. But Mm -hmm. just being there for the person I yeah. think is, and just understanding that they're going through their, their own journey with grief. Totally. Yeah. 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 I'll say the same thing too. And, um, yeah, I would say like, even just like be gracious with people. Yeah. You know, um, like you said, like, you know, you might, you might put a lot of effort into like, Hey, I'm going to text, uh, you know, so-and-so yeah. and I'm yeah. going to try to like come up with these Thanks. scripture <laughs> right, verses right, right. or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. you send it. And maybe you don't get no the response. response yeah. You get you get you don't get the response at all. Yeah. Um, and that's not like something that you've done, you know, wrong or whatever. Yeah. It's just uh, yeah. It's it's the grieving process is kind of different, you know. Yeah. Uh, like if you're talking about the different steps of like the grieving process, people land on those steps for different amounts of time. Very true. And yeah. they move through through it in different like you know yeah like just at different paces. Yeah. You know sometimes you know. Maybe can go, can go through a couple of them really quickly, but then there's that one that's like, just can't, um, you know, fully get over right away, yeah. which is fine. That's, 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 that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, extending grace to people, I would say that as well too. Yeah. Um, to people in those situations, um, going through, through tough, uh, yeah, through loss and through, like you said, not just like, you know, a physical death, but you know, relationships as well. Like you mentioned oh, too, yeah. like that's really applicable to like, you know, 
every day, like loss of friendships, loss of relationships, um, dreams, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's the same thing. You do have to like mourn those and mourn those and you can mourn those things well. Yeah. Um, but exactly. It, yeah. For sure. Good. Cool. Um, so you're right. Just to kind of end this out, um, we do want to plug your podcast. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah. Love for people to be able to to hear it. Um, obviously we touched a little bit about on your dad's kind of story and, um, I didn't want to talk so many of the details in terms of like, you know, I know yeah, don't give story. it all away. <laughs> Cause I can't, yeah, I can't give it away. Like I said, I just mentioned the conversion story, which is pretty cool. Um, which is really interesting. Cause like, it's so true that you can find God like in very unexpected ways. Yeah. Yeah. The way, you know, can God, yeah, yeah. she went to say the way that God can kind of show up. There were some things my dad cool. said, I was like, huh, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep that in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But God was in it. But God was in it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. To God be the glory exactly. and all these things, yeah. right? And you can't like in a sense like you can't discount the way that like it kind of it kind of yeah. happens, even if it's an unconventional kind of way. Yeah. Which is really weird. Sorry, I'll I'll tell this really weird story. Um it's not my my personal story, but I was in, in class one time and um there was this girl who wasn't like a believer or anything. Um she was telling a story about her dad. She said, you know, her dad, um, I think he was like a like drinking pretty heavily, you know, for like a really, really long time. Mm -hmm. And then one time he was asleep and uh, he was awakened, awoken. What is it? Awakened? Awakened. 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 Yeah, he yeah. woke up. <laughs> um, and he said that like he saw this like person, individual, like appear to him. It was a man. A yeah. man was on a cross and essentially like instructed him to like, you need to like stop drinking was he able to stop okay so say that <laughs> this man um uh this man uh the girl was saying that her dad was uh, living in india at the time uh -huh. so they're they're living in india um completely shook the guy he was uh scared mm -hmm. he stopped drinking you know just kill, quit a cold turkey they moved to america uh you know one day he's with his daughter they're driving around um like just the neighborhood wow. and they pull up in front of like, they drive by a church and he looks over a man on a cross. and he like kind of stops and he like kind of like, is just like shook. And then he's like, looks to them and to the family. He's like, that's who I saw. Oh, that's who like wow. appeared to me and was telling me like, yeah, you know, well, that's even drinking. crazy to know that context. Like they were living in India. So it's not like right. there was a bunch of Catholic churches and he saw this all the time. Exactly. Yeah. Like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Which is really weird. So it, it changed his life to like he stopped drinking, whatever got right with, you know, and stuff yeah. like that. Um, but yeah, like all that to say, like, you're right. It's God comes in unexpected God comes ways. Unexpected ways. Yeah. <laughs> God comes in unexpected ways. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we can go ahead and just like take a look if you're looking at uh, yeah, this so out. It's called it's To Fly a Coop. Um, I just uh, I need to add some context here, too, so people know. I did mark everything as explicit because my dad talks about his whole entire testimony and his testimony is colorful. Yeah. And violent. And <laughs> so um, it's definitely not something I would say to don't listen with your kids. Um, but it is very honest and he does. It, it's his testimony. And so like the first episode, just kind of go over where he's at now and with the diagnosis. And then we just go into his life story. And so I think two and three are probably some of my favorite ones because that's his childhood and then his salvation story. Yeah. But after that, he keeps going like... Um, I asked him to talk about healing. I asked him to talk about his his thoughts on healing, and that's coming up, I think, in like episode six or something. And I asked him to talk about his ministry and his regrets with life and his with the things he was looking uh, that he was proud about. You know, all all those things we just kind of go through his whole entire life over each each one. But um, yeah, so each one will talk to people in a different way. Mm -hmm. it will, each one will probably hit a different demographic, right? Two and three is really he. My dad said, "Hey." If someone gets saved from this, it, this will all be worth it, meaning the cancer journey. So I was like, okay, God, make this happen. Let yeah. someone get saved from this because uh, that would just be such a blessing for him. I think his whole life he's wanted to just preach about Jesus. He's been so grateful for the way Jesus has saved him. So anyway, so that's kind of the the thought process behind it. They always come out on Sundays at 7 p.m., whatever mountain time they're in, and 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And they're about, uh, nope, I don't need to keep going on about that. 
That's about it. If you <laughs> there's a website to flyacoop.com where I put up pictures of the chickens and of my dad and and of the coop itself. So you can check that out as well. And then of course the name is to fly a coop. It's on Spotify. Yeah. And one day we'll hopefully be on Apple Podcasts. I don't know. Yeah. I'm waiting for that approval. <laughs> <laughs> let's yeah. do it. We can make it happen. Hey, our yeah. this podcast is on Apple, Spotify, and the YouTube. Anything else? I think that's it. Yeah. Nice. We can definitely make it happen. Right. Yeah, <clears throat> for sure. Yeah, so people for sure. Um, yeah, I would say like I think it this would be a really cool thing. Um, not just listen to it, but share it, share it with people. Yeah. Um, I think that's the best thing that we can we can do. Obviously, like follow it, subscribe to it, but then share it with people, people that maybe need to, um, that could be going through a similar situation, or um, people that just need to hear something hopeful, something good in the middle of you know difficulty. Yeah. Um, I walk away. Like I said, listening to it with a lot of hope, um, encouraged. Um, I feel like my faith strengthened, uh, strengthened as well. I love that. And one more thing to throw in there. This is my dad's podcast. Sure. Um, so I I did like the, the techie things, the recording things, but it really is his heart. I don't agree with everything that he says, but I sure did platform it. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's his heart really that you're seeing. And I just tried to honor that. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Well, thanks, Ashley, again thanks. for jumping on and being a, uh, it's so fun a recurring it. guest. This I think... table, so take it with me. Is it welcoming? Yeah, it's so yeah. welcoming. <laughs> no more <drinks. laughs> no, Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. So thanks again for uh, listening. And um, as always, be sure to subscribe to this podcast uh, around the table. Um, you can also subscribe and just check out all of our media ministries, um, you know, yeah, social accounts. We are on Instagram, uh, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, uh, and whatever new platform is going to come out, we will be on there as well. We'll be there. Yeah, we'll be there. So, uh, yeah, feel free to give us a follow and then also give us a share. Um, yeah, we just want to keep um, kind of having real conversations about real, like, life things, you know, and um, at the same time, like, just trying to provide hope for people. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, cool. Well, thanks again. Appreciate it. All right. All right see ya. Bye. <laughs>